Let's try to learn a thing or two about ratios. So ratios are just expressions that compare quantities. So that might just be a fancy way let me just, of saying something that you may or may not understand. So let me give you actual examples. If I have 10 horses, 10 horses, and I have five dogs, five dogs, and someone were to come to me and say, Sal, what is the ratio? What is the ratio of horses of horses to dogs? So I want to know how many horses do I have for some number of dogs. So I could say I have 10 horses. I have 10 horses for every five dogs. So I could say the ratio of horses to dogs is 10 to 5. Or I could also write that as a fraction. I could say the ratio of horses to dogs is 10 to 5. Or I could just write it out. I could say it is 10 to 5. These all are saying the same thing. And the thing I write first, or the thing that I write on top, is the number of horses. So this is the number of horses right there. That's the number of horses. And that's all the number of horses. If I want to talk about the number of dogs, this is the number of dogs. That's the number of dogs. Or that's the number of dogs. I'm just these are all just expressions that are comparing two quantities. Now, I just said I have ten horses for every five dogs. But that what does that mean? That means I have five horses for every one dog. Sorry, not five horses for every one dog. That means I have two horses for every one dog. Right? If if for five dogs I have ten, that means for every one of these dogs there are two horses. For every one of these dogs there are two horses. For every one of every two of these horses there's one dog. And I just kind of reasoned through that. So this is I have two horses for every one dog. But how do you get there? How do you get from ten to five to two to one? Well, you can think of what's the biggest number that divides into both of these numbers. What's their greatest common divisor? I have a whole video on that. But the biggest number that divides into both of these guys is 5. So you divide both of them by 5, and you can kind of get this ratio into a reduced form. And if I write it here, it would be the same thing as 2 to 1, or 2, or 2 to 1. And so what's interesting about ratios, it isn't literally, or doesn't always have to be literally, the number of horses and the numbers of dogs you have. What a ratio tells you is how many horses do I have for every dog? Or how many, dog do, how many dogs do I have for every horse? Now, just to make things clear, what if someone asked me, what is the ratio of, of dogs to horses? Dogs to horses. So what's the difference in these two statements? Here I said horses to dogs. Here I'm saying dogs to horses. Dogs to horses. So. Since I've switched the ratio, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the ratio of dogs to horses, I've switched the numbers. So dogs for every five dogs, I have 10 horses. Or if I divide both of these by five for every one dog, I have five horses. So the ratio of dogs to horses is 5 to 10, or 1 to 5, or you could write it this way. 1 to, I could write it, let me write it down here. 1 to 5, or I could write 1 to to 5. And the general convention, this wouldn't be necessarily incorrect. That's not wrong, but the general convention is to get your ratio or your fraction, if you want to call it that, into the simplest form or into this reduced form right there. So let's just do a couple of other examples. Let's say I have let's say I have 20 apples. I have 20 apples. Let's say I have 40 oranges 40 oranges and let's say that i have yeah i don't know let's say i have 60 60 strawberries strawberries now what is the ratio of apples to oranges to strawberries so i could write it like this i could write what is the ratio of i'll write it like this apples apples to oranges to oranges to strawberries to strawberries well i could start off by literally saying well for 60 strawberries for every 60 strawberries for every 60 strawberries i have 40 oranges i have 40 oranges 
and I have 20 apples. So then this would be legitimate. You could say the ratio of apples to oranges to strawberry are 20 to 40, sorry, 20 to 40 to 60. And that wouldn't be wrong, but we saw before we could put it into reduced form. So think of what's the largest number that divides into all three of these. We can't just do it into two of these now because now my ratio has three actual quantities. Well, the largest number that divides into all of these guys is 20. So if we divide all of them by 20, we can then say for every one apple, I now have, if you divide this guy by 20, I have two oranges and I have and I have three strawberries. So the ratio of apples to oranges to strawberries is 1 to 2 to 3. And I got that in every case by just dividing these guys all by 20. I divided by 20. I think you get the general idea. If someone were to ask you what's the ratio of, let me just write it down because it never hurts to have a little bit more clarification. If someone wanted to know the ratio of strawberries to oranges, let me get into my orange color, strawberries to oranges to apples, to apples. Oh, I thought I was going to do that in yellow. To apples. What is this ratio going to be? Well, for every three strawberries, I have two oranges, two oranges, and I have one apple. So then it would be three to two to one. The general idea is whatever order someone asks you for the different items, you put the ratio is going to be in that same exact order. Now, in all of the examples so far, I gave you the number of quantity the quantity of things we had, and I we figured out the ratio. What if it went the other way? What if it went the other way? What if I told you a ratio? What if I said the ratio the ratio of boys to girls in a classroom, boys to girls, is, let's say the ratio of boys to girls is 2 to 3, which I could have also written as 2 to 3, just like that. So for every two boys, I have three girls. Or for every three girls, I have two boys. And let's say that there are, there are 40 students students in the classroom in the classroom and then someone were to ask you how many girls are there how many girls are in in the classroom so this seems a little bit more convoluted than what we did before we know the total number of students and we know the ratio but how many girls are in the room so let's think about it this way. The fact that the ratio of boys to girls, I'll write it like this, boys, maybe I'll be stereotypical with the colors, the ratio of boys to girls is equal to, is equal to 2, 2 to 3. I hate to be so stereotypical, but it doesn't hurt. 2 to 3. The ratio of boys to girls is 2 to 3. So this says for every three girls, there's two boys. For every two boys, there's three girls. But what does it also say? It also says, for every, for every five students, for every five students, there are what? There are two boys and three girls. There are two boys and, and three girls. Now why is this, help, this statement helpful? Well, how many groups of five students do I have? I have 40 students in my class right there, right? I have 40 students in my class. And for every five students, there are two boys and three girls. So how many groups of five students do I have? So I have a total of 40 students. Let me do it in this purple color. I have 40 students, students, and then there are five students per group, five students per group. And I figured out that group just by looking at the ratio. For every five students, I have two boys and three girls. So how many groups of five students do I have? So that means that I have eight groups. 40 divided by 5, I have eight groups of five students. Now, we're wondering how many girls there are. So each group is going to have three girls. Each group has three girls. So each 
group has three girls. Each group has three girls. So how many girls do I have? I have eight groups. Each of them have three girls. So I have eight groups times three girls per group is equal to 24 girls. 24 girls in the classroom. And you could do the same exercise with boys. How many boys are there? There's a couple of ways you could do it. You could say, for, well, for every group, there are two boys. There's eight groups. There's 16 boys. Or you could say, look, there's 40 students. 24 of them are girls. 40 minus 24 is 16. So either way, you could get to 16 boys. And if you want to you can think of a kind of a fast way to do it, and it would be identical, you'd say, look, 2 plus 3 is 5. So for every 5 students, 2 boys, 3 girls. How many groups are there? You say 40 divided by 5 is equal to 8 groups. Every group has 3 girls. So you do 8 times 3 is equal to 24 girls. Let's do one that's a little bit harder than that. A little bit harder than that. Let's do one where I say that the ratio, the ratio of, uh, let's say, well, let's, let's go back to, let's go to the farm, the farm example. The ratio of a sheep, I'll do sheep in white, the ratio of sheep to, I don't know, chickens, to chickens, to, I don't know, what's another farm animal, to pigs. The ratio of sheep to chicken to pigs, maybe I should just say chicken right there. The ratio of sheep to chicken to pigs, or chickens, I should say chickens, is, let's say the ratio is 2 to 5 to, to 10. And notice, I can't reduce this anymore. There's no number that divides into all of these. So this is the ratio of sheep to chickens to pigs. And let's say that I have a total of 51 animals. So I have a total of 51 animals. And I want to know how many chickens do I have? How many chickens? How many chickens do I have? Well, we do the same idea. For every two sheep, I have five chickens and I have 10 pigs. That tells me for every 17 animals, so for every 17 animals, so every group of 17 animals, what do I have? And where did I get 17 from? I just added 2 plus 5 plus 10. So for every 17 animals, I am going to have, let me pick a new color, I'm going to have two sheep, two sheep, five chickens, five chickens, and 10 pigs, 10 pigs. Now, how many groups of 17 animals do I have? I have a total of 51 animals. So if there's 17 animals per group, 51 animals divided by 17 animals per group, I have three groups of 17 animals. Three groups of 17 animals. Now, I want to know how many chickens. Every group has five chickens. Every group has five chickens. We already know that. And I have three groups. So I have three groups. Every group has five chickens. So I'm going to have three times five chickens, which is equal to 15 chickens. 15 chickens. Not too bad. All I did is add these up and say, for every 17 animals, I've got five chickens. I've got three groups of 17. So for each of those groups, I have five chickens. Three times five is 15 chickens. And you could use the same process to figure out the number of sheep or pigs you might have.